Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter where you are in the world, you are listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio and Biz Talk Radio, biztalkradio.com. The show airs weekdays, 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, no, is it? Yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I'm still learning my schedule on air. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern and Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. However, I definitely would like for you to start first here on Power 98.5, whether it's on the iOS or Android app, Alexa, or even Amazon Music, or Power985.com. And you can always submit any questions, feedback, share the love and insight by going to the app and clicking the messenger in the bottom right hand corner and talk to us. What a lineup uh, all week long. It's been incredible, amazing from sports to music artists. I have Paige Corwin with us today. We're also going to do a live listen to her new, I'm going to call new hit. It's a new hit on Power 98.5 called Should Have Known. We have added this to the Power 98.5 playlist. It is going to be playing for however long we want it to be, and it's going to be for quite some time. Should Have Known by Ms. Paige Corwin. She is a New York-based pop artist cutting through the noise, especially being based out of New York. Depending on the location of where she's at, uh, there there may be some noise. It may be noise that she likes and she may not want to cut through. I was just there down in the financial district and it was peace and quiet. I didn't even feel like I was in New York, to be quite honest. Uh Paige, breaking through the noise out there in New York. What part of New York are we talking about? Hello. Hey. I'm on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. Oh, okay. That explains it. Okay, yeah, you're cutting through all that. <laughs> <laughs> There's pesky <laughs> tourists that are coming and making all that racket. Definitely. But luckily, I'm a little far from Times Square, so... It's not too hectic in my neighborhood. No, I love it up there. You know, there really isn't too much of a bad part or section when I think of anywhere from 54 to 50 Street, 55th Street down to uh, the financial district. I like it down there a lot. I was just there getting things prepped and prepared for New York Fashion Week. And yeah, the energy was extremely good. Very, very good. I think you're blessed, especially in this day and age. New York seems to be doing well. Definitely. I love New York City. How long have you been living there? I moved here in, I think it was 2013. 2012 or 2013. So I'm officially a New Yorker now because I've been here for over 10 years. And that's what people tell me. (laughs) But if you've been here for more than 10 years, you're officially a New Yorker. Do you stay far away from the metro? Or are you doing the Uber, Lyft, bus, or how's the metro out there? Because I refuse to use it. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite thing in the world, um, but I do use it pretty often. I also, like, I'm a big fan of the bus. Mm. So I take the Crosstown bus from the east side to the west side to go to work multiple times a week, and I just prefer, prefer it more because I'm above ground and it feels safer and their service. <laughs> yeah, I've I stopped using the metro probably 20 years ago. And I would say I haven't had the experience of an Uber yet. I'm not sure how that would work. I mean, we already know how taxis are out there and I know that on the West Coast there's a huge rivalry between taxis and Uber and Lyfts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware of, I was told by the hotel where I was staying at that, you know, an Uber would be fine. Yeah. I, I Uber a lot. I use Uber and Lyft. Do you get stuck or what is the experience like, honestly? Cause it's, it's nowhere near like a, a taxi cab. I mean, a taxi cab from my experience, they will 
literally push someone. They don't care. They will tap, hit, push. They will make contact with another vehicle. <laughs> Definitely. They're crazy drivers here, but um, I don't. I never had a problem with Uber or Lyft. I prefer it actually because you just put your location in, mm -hmm. get in the car, and then it's paid for. So it's just a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little more safe, but yeah. Bring us up to speed. You've, you've done a great job with the songs, music that's come out. You once wrote, uh, it's the coolest feeling in a world when people know your songs. Do you still feel that way? Do you feel that people know who you are? Or do you feel that there's a lot more you need to do to make yourself more national or global? I definitely think there's a lot more that I need to do. I mean, you can always evolve as an artist and as a person. But um, in terms of growth, I've definitely seen myself like grow tremendously over the years. And I'm definitely like constantly building my fan base and whatnot. But no, I definitely do think there's a ton of room for improvement and I would like to go more globally and <laughs> be more well known. Mm -hmm. I'm going to honestly say with the new track, I was surprised. I normally never listen to a song until like I'm live on air with you and to have that first experience with this. I couldn't wait. And, and the reason why is because I went to Apple Music and I listened to everything else that's already out there. And I was very excited about this because I thought, I want to do something different. I don't want to wait until the last minute. If this song really does hit that sweet spot for what I look for for my radio station, I want to get it on before the interview. And it happened where it did. And I'm like, and I, you, you got my text. You know what I said. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is working. So tell us about should have known. What's the backstory? It's debuting. The release is today. It's added on a power 98.5. Give us all the bells and whistles. Thank you so much. Um, so I wrote this song. I recently took a trip to LA. I went for one month back in May. And I had 18 writing production sessions. I worked with a ton of different talented producers, co-writers. And this was one of the songs that I was like, I definitely want to move forward with. It just, it felt like really natural, like the writing process, the recording process. And I, we wrote the song, me and Stephen Conley in one day. So we wrote it and recorded the entire thing in like eight hours which I was really impressed by because usually I'll write the song and then I'll go back and track vocals for it. But we just did everything in one day. But yeah, should have known is about this girl that I was friends with or who I thought I was friends with. I had known her for over a year. And when I was out in LA at a show, she was there as well. And I went to say hi to her and she just pretended like she didn't know who I was. So it was a little awkward and obviously I was hurt by it, but I was like, all right, it's not a big deal. I'll just write a song about it and then I'll feel better because songwriting is my therapy. And yeah, that's the backstory of Should Have Known. Did you, pr you produced, wrote all of that or where was the assistance on this again? Can you recap that? I was in the studio with the producer, Steven, and we built the beat. I came in with like a reference track. I can't yeah. recall which I had for a reference. I, I always go into the studio with multiple tracks that um, I want to be like similar to. And we started like, he started putting like the bare bones down, like building the beat. I already knew that the topic that I just explained was what I wanted to write about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just started riffing, doing like the melodies and the songwriting when he was still building the beat. And then he would chime in and help with some of the lyrics and the melodies. And then, yeah, we kind of just like built it together in different steps. But um, he definitely like he produced the whole track and then I wrote it and he helped me co-write it. And but you're you're involved. I mean, not all music artists are completely involved in the producing of 
their music or their EPs and you are. And that's why he was like, all right, I want to go back at this again. I want to dig a little bit deeper because you never know. You, you, you could end up sharing some sort of antidote or something else that could have popped out to you because this is your first official live radio interview. And I just want to make sure that you're here with me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Nobody can see me right now, but I'm I'm smiling. I'm cheesing really hard. <laughs> what does it feel like for you, honestly? Does it feel? Does this opportunity feel and in, in that give you that confirmation that you are seen, you are heard? And just to share a little bit of a, of a backstory to everyone, Paige, you reached out to us directly. You put your own press materials together. You put that email together. However, I did not receive some blanket email from a producer, director, label. It was so well thought out that... I told you, you could have a great career in public relations. So with that, how do you feel now that everything's solidified, that everything you work towards, someone has taken recognition, not just for who you are and your talent, but because you know what you're doing. And so many music artists don't understand and don't care at times or may not have the opportunities at times to put that foot forward to know what to do when we think about doing business and doing business the right way. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely been a, it's extremely discouraging at times. You put all this effort into like your own press release, doing digging on like who to actually email. And then it can take hours and days and weeks and then nobody will pr reply to you. It probably just gets like either thrown in their spam or they have hundreds of other emails from artists coming in every single day. So when you replied, I was actually, I had just left yoga and I looked at my phone and I saw the email and I was so excited. And I, um, yeah, it just felt really good because like I said, it is discouraging when you put in all this work and then, nobody really notices it. So then you're like, Oh, am I doing all this for nothing? But no, it, it felt really good. Just curious. Has anyone else responded? What's been the feedback? I had a couple people respond about like doing like a blog post about it or like a little um, article, like reviewing the song and things like that. But that's pretty much it. I would say only like two people other than you that have replied to my hundred and something emails I sent out. But that's good though. I mean, there are times where you guys won't hear from anyone because they're, they're either oversaturated or overloaded with so many submissions. Exactly. We're going to go and play live right now. Should have known before I do. Is there a blessing? Is there anything that you want to, give to us or acknowledge or shout out to anyone? Um, I do want to shout out my family and friends because they have been extremely supportive. There are times when I've done shows all around like New York City and my friends and families always show up for me. So if it weren't for them, there have been times where there'd probably be like nobody in the crowd cheering me on. So definitely just like my family and friends for always supporting me and all the producers I've worked with and songwriters. We do have a question and I'm, I, I, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but I'm surprised because I'm like, okay, so someone is wanting to, I, I like when my messenger is being used. Uh, that's there for a reason. As someone, this is by Sarah from Wisconsin. As someone who's been through a lot personally, how do you maintain balance while navigating the pressures of the music industry? I'm an independent music artist. I'm 16 and I don't know where to begin. Ooh, I, I think that's a great, that's a, that's great a really question. good, that's a really deep question. And she's 16. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, are so young like you have your whole future ahead of you you're getting into the game early 
which I think is huge. But I think the main thing for me is just staying true to yourself. I know that sounds really corny, but there can be like a lot of noise, whether it be like negative or positive, and then people give you feedback and then you're like, well, that's not the feedback I wanted. And it can get discouraging and stuff. But if it means a lot to you, like what you're writing, what you're saying, then I think that's all that really matters. And I think consistency is also extremely important. Like you have to be extremely consistent on social media, releasing, which I could do way better with. I mean, we all are guilty of not being Mm. super consistent with it. But yeah, I think mainly just like being true to yourself and doing what you think is honest. And like I said before, like I was leaving yoga. So I do like a lot of yoga, which to me is very therapeutic and stuff and just helps you clear your head because I feel like there's so much noise and it is such a saturated market. And you're often like comparing yourself to other artists who are doing extremely better than you or have like received more recognition. So then you can compare yourself and be like, oh, this is like discouraging. I'm not where I want to be, but everybody's journey is different. And I'm a true believer that if you put in the work and actually like really want something, you can get it. What I would like to know before we do this is I'm thinking about, you answered that very well. What I would really like to know in addition to that is where were you at Paige when you were 16 and what did you learn that you wish, I know you shared, but, but does it take you back to where you were at in your life, in your music career, or maybe not having done music at that time because something else changed your direction? Yeah. I mean, in my elementary school yearbook, it says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wrote a singer. I've just always really liked singing, performing. I would perform with like my friends that were my neighbors, like for my family, when my parents would get back from work. And I used to sing at my church, but I never thought I could make a career out of it. It was more so just something I enjoyed in a hobby. Mm. And then I went to school for corporate communications and sociology. I got my bachelor's degree and I was just like, this doesn't seem like genuine to me. I felt like it was the right thing to do, like go to college and get a degree. But I was like, I feel like I'm just doing it because that's the norm. But I guess like when I was 16, like I always loved music. I just didn't think I could make a career out of it because I know how difficult the industry can be. But one day I was just like, you know what? Life's too short. If I don't give it a shot, I'm going to regret it forever. So Yeah, I think when I was 16, I wasn't like writing my own songs or really putting myself out there in terms of originality and posting, but um, I kind of wish I did earlier, but at the end of the day, like I said, everybody's journey is different and I don't regret not doing it sooner because I feel like I learned a lot before I actually got involved in the industry, which I think is really important too, so I don't know if I answered that question. You did. You did. Thank you, Sarah, for the question, because that prompted me for that. I I really enjoy that. Thank you so much, because I don't have any questions purposely lined up in that. That just, I, I felt that that felt so good. And then to be able for you to have the experience to go back to who were you at 16 and, you know, would you change anything and you want it? And that's, That's phenomenal. That's a huge accomplishment because 16 can be a rough, rough period in life. It's an awkward age. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Especially in school. It's an awkward. What what are we at 16? Sophomore? No, we got freshman, junior, or junior? I think. Junior, right? Yeah. At 16, yeah, you're probably um, like a sophomore or a junior, I think. Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. 14 freshmen, 15 sophomore, 16 junior. Junior. Yeah, okay. Ar- around that age. Around that age, yeah. <laughs> around I, that grade. I was finished with high school at 16 and already taken pre-college classes, so that's where I got that little bump because 
Uh, I didn't have to, I graduated with my class and I didn't have to, but I wanted to, but I was excited that I was able to get through high school as early as I did. I enjoyed it very much. I didn't enjoy the bullying that came with it. Uh, but I do remember oh. <laughs> being 16. Oh yeah. Those freaking brats are horrible. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them, at least, uh, at least when I went to high school, um, very insecure, very, very unknowledgeable of what life and reality really is, um, outside of yes, video games, but we didn't sit for hours on end like kids do or people do today even adults i mean 10 hours for video game no thank you we enjoyed going outside so but yeah what uh what good memories thank you again sarah all right you ready should have known by Paige corwin yes <laughs> Sexy, sexy, sexy. <laughs> I love it. I, I can play you. it back to back. I'm telling you, I'm so glad I did not wait because I, I would not been able to control myself. I would have had to put this interview on pause and be like, okay, it's got to be added now. No, it's, I want to hear music <laughs> like that over and over and over again by you. It is outstanding out of all of the tracks, everything I've heard that you've made, this hands down is delicious. Thank you so much. That, that really means a lot. How did it feel to hear? I mean, from an outside, like live on radio. I mean, this is what I live for, for you guys. It just has a different feeling, a different vibe than going to Spotify or iTunes. It's just to be here with us and just have this experience of your creation. It's powerful because without music, everything would be dead. Where would commercials be? Where would film, television, video? Where would anything be without music? Yeah, no, you're right. Music is 
incredible. Where do we go from here? What's next? When do we get another single? How long are you going to be working with this, promoting it? Where's the video? What's going on? So I I posted a little clip today on Instagram, like a reel. It's a 40 second clip. I shot a bunch of like small clips that I'm going to post because I feel like they perform better than doing like a full music video just for YouTube. So I'm going to continue to post as much as possible and um, release all those small clips that I already shot. And then I plan on releasing my next single in October. I'm shooting from like four... I'm shooting for a release date like four to six weeks from today. So either like, like I would say like mid October, just because I want to keep the, the flow going with and like the consistency with releasing. So yeah, I'm definitely going to promote this the heck out of this for like the next month and then just drop another one that is already ready to go that I'm really excited about too. Is the next one somewhat like this does it have a feeling is it more dance is it more calm where are you going to take us next the next one might be my favorite it is definitely like a dance track it starts off um i wouldn't say like a ballad but definitely like slower and then it just builds in the course like really hits you and you're not really expecting it Um, it's really different from this song in terms of production, but it's, I think it's a personal favorite in addition to the one that I released today. It's called Anymore and it's a really fun one. I hope I'm the first one that gets to hear (laughs) that. I'll send it to you after this. Please do. We'll have you on again. I'm serious. I want to keep doing this. It's what it's why I have a station. It's not a penny saver like other radio stations. That's over ninety percent commercials. I believe you and I had a conversation about that. This is all about music, <laughs> music and talk. Yeah, definitely. I have to ask. Wasn't you sure if I wanted to do this? I wanted to go on the the emotion and feeling of how we were vibing between desperate. Unlearn how to love, sorry anthem, and be okay. What one is your most favorite? I would say Unlearn How to Love You. Why? I just think the like the lyrics are beautiful, the message is beautiful, it's extremely relatable. Um and I don't know, I, I just it's just like a gut reaction as soon as you asked me which out of those four that's the first thing that came to mind i think the production is also really cool um yeah i think i'm learning how to love you definitely okay we're gonna play it here we go oh another one another yeah that's what i'm talking (laughs) about hey let's go doing okay and every time you close your eyes no surprise it isn't mine that you're looking into hey i know i called too many times forgive me i'm a fire sign all i know is i don't know i'm trying to grow it kind of blows but it's where the wind took me i'm kind of embarrassed to admit i hope you miss me Cause you're out moving on and I'm still stuck right where you left me But I'm trying my best, hollow and restless Forgive me if it takes a while to unlearn
I have to say, again, I said it to to you before, Paige, your videos are perfection. Thank you. I love Thank that you. video. That means a lot. I mean, the way your videographer, the producer, you know, all the above, how you just flashed here and flashed there, flashed here, flashed there. And you know what that song gave me? Vampire Diaries vibes. You know, Somebody else said that. Really? Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? The vampire show with uh, Nia Dobrave and Vampire Diaries. I, I've never seen it, but somebody actually told me that. I can't remember who, but somebody said that they could see it in that show. Mm-hmm. Like they could hear it in that show. Yes. Totally. Total Vampire Diaries vibes. You you literally have great placement tracks or tracks that belong in placement. Thank you. Is that where you're going now? What are you going to do when we think about your music and TV, film, commercial, video games, all of that? Are you working with a company? You're getting ready to work with a company. Your music belongs in these productions. Yeah, I guess it's just like being connected to the right person, knowing like who to trust like who I can reach out to to get those placements. When I was in LA, I actually wrote um, a song for the Sync World and um, it's in the Warner Chapel catalog right now. So it is being considered for TV and film. So hopefully that gets picked up. But um, that was more so a prompt for something specific. It wasn't a song that I wrote on my own and released. So that's a little different, but I definitely would love any of my songs to be in a movie or a TV show. It's definitely the goal. What I would like to know, and I hope that this question serves you, how do you balance drawing from your personal experiences while making sure your music resonates universally with your audience? I think just being like, just being unique and like speaking from the heart i think that people will be able to tell that it's genuine and i think that is the most important thing so i feel like if i'm experiencing something that's either like positive or negative sad happy i feel like that could be really relatable with somebody else you know because we're all human and we all go through ups and downs and yeah i think just being as natural as possible and genuine as possible, it like people will resonate with it. I feel like they will be able to tell what's real and what's not. Your music draws from your personal experiences, particularly your history with complicated family relationships and themes like addiction and divorce. How do you navigate the process of turning such raw vulnerable moments into music that not only empowers you, but also resonates deeply with your audience? And do you ever find it difficult to relive those moments during your songwriting process? Um, yes and no. I feel like, like I said before, songwriting is therapeutic for me. So oftentimes, like I have a difficult time, like just saying how I feel like being direct with it. So I think songwriting is just an outlet for me. So I definitely, it can be triggering at times, just like talking about something that's sad or like made you sad in the past. But I definitely think it's important to vocalize it because nobody's perfect. Everybody goes through ups and downs, like I said. So I definitely think being honest with it is 
is important because you never know who else is going through something similar or like has the same feelings. So. Do yeah. you, this is, this is coming from the heart. Part of me doesn't want to ask it because I just don't want to go deep because the, the music and a feeling and just all of this just has got like a nice flow and balance. But I, I do want to ask from just expanding from our personal conversations how how much do you love being a woman in this day and age of the climate of where the world is at do you feel that you have many things to look forward to or is there a little bit of you that is slightly scared or apprehensive to expand all of yourself to be transparent throughout all of yourself so that we can really, really brace you when you're on that stage, watching you on those videos, listening to your music, seeing you live. Are you ready? I think that's a great question. I feel like this ties into the question that Sarah had asked about like pursuing music at a very early age. I think that since I've been through so much and I've been working at it for so long, I, I know who I am. I know what I stand for. And I feel like if I was like a lot younger, I would have not necessarily been manipulated into different things, but I feel like I would have been like easily persuaded to like say one thing or like do one thing. You know what I mean? So I feel like, I'm not afraid. Obviously, it can come with, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, um, what was I going to say? It doesn't necessarily have to be so, um, like, so scary. Like, people always make it seem like, oh, you're going to be on stage or this, this. I think it goes back to what I was saying. Like, if you're just yourself and just genuine then it really shouldn't matter what other people think people are always going to have something to say and there's always going to be trolls out there that are trying to bring you down and i'm sure it can be like scary at times but again if you're truthful to yourself then i think it it shouldn't matter at all mm. thank you thank you for being with us here on power 98.5 satellite radio as well as biz talk radio we will re-air this episode. This is a live and it will come back to you as a live. Stay tuned. Uh, check out the schedule. We will be posting and sharing and tagging page um, online. We will be sending out emails and everything else, social media. We are going to enjoy this over and over again for years to come. If you happen to not catch this entire interview or if you're wanting to not wait to listen to the live we will have it available on any one of your favorite podcast platforms amazon music amazon audible and spotify i will make sure page that we have those links and everything sent to you i hope um that we can have this out uh again as a live sometime before next week i don't want to put too much of rush on it i want to make sure we have everything put together but you're going to have everything so if you decide that you want to push the iheart radio spotify or amazon music uh links and everything for everyone to listen to do it and then oh we're all going to be hearing it again <laughs> so <laughs> awesome thank you so much you're welcome. We're closing out with Should Have Known by Paige Corwin. I guess now I do all. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I felt pretty stupid. Cause when we locked eyes, it's like I never existed. Say that you don't recognize me. Think what you want, but remind me. Weren't you the one that would call me? Doesn't that cut deep?
Turn the page off, learn my part Don't let strangers get your heart But now I'm doing better Friend us on your socials and let's connect. 